Well, fantastic. Well, you know, I've, I've read, I've read your bio. You got lots of passions. Mm -hmm. One of them that jumps out is like horse riding. Yes. Right? Show jumping. Yes. Is it called show jumping? Show jumping. Yeah, equestrianism, show jumping. Okay, so tell me about that. I mean, this is the first thing you got into, right? Before yes. the modeling, before anything else, that was your thing, right? That was it. That was my shtick, so right, to speak. So tell me about that. My shtick. Yeah. So that was my. I'm afraid of horses. Are you, know? you really? Yeah, yeah they, they're huge. You know? I always think they're gonna bolt. <laughs> You know what I mean? You've got this Don't fear. forget I'm six feet tall, though, so they're not that big to me. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> No offense. He's really tall, by the way. In person, he's six I'm... foot five. Um, <laughs> no, but he like, just has yeah. slight features. But um, for me, it was I started off being terrified of horses. Mm. This is a funny story. In New York City, and my mother is one of these people that if you're scared, she's going to make you do it. And if you don't want to, like, if you don't like the way that food tastes, she's going to make you taste it. She's one of All these right. people. So she made me ride a horse to get over my fear. And she had no idea what type of animal she bore because after the first time it just clicked there's something about the communication that I had between myself and the animal was a communication that I've never had with friends I've never had with human beings right. up until that point so I, I it turned into a passion and I started taking writing lessons and that kind of morphed into when we went down to New Jersey for my high school years it morphed into me starting to do horse shows and I am darn competitive I am a very competitive person. Great, so you, you, you always want to win and stuff? Like, yeah, yeah, I don't know so much if it's I have to win, but I have to do well competitively, if you know what I mean. Like, mm -hmm. it wasn't so much that... Like, well, if that's I got, a very American trait. Right? I guess oh, so, American yeah. Guys, I, mean, pretty competitive. I think so, and yeah. I think it's bred in our schools. I think they actually teach us competitiveness in our schools. Right. Um, then, though, at that point when I started showing, it I actually have a real talent for it, and it was a natural given talent. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in life, you only really get one or two things that you're naturally gifted at. And that is, for me, one of my things that I was gifted at. I wanted to be an Olympian. And that was where my course was going, and that's the way I was training, and that's the type of trainers I had, and that's the type of horses I owned. It was very serious. Then when I got discovered for modeling, I went up to go meet with my modeling agency at the time, and they said to me, look, your bum is like this big, and your thighs are like this big. You got to make a choice. It's either got to be the riding or the modeling. Um, at that time, I decided I would go for the modeling because the writing is something you can always go back to. Yeah, I kind of regret that a little bit, mm -hmm. but because at the end of the day, my passion is still horseback riding. Right. And well, you, you get to do lots of that, like now. I mean, like in your spare time. Yeah, right? surprisingly. You know, jump on a horse yeah, somewhere. Hong Kong's got a couple of really great places to ride horses. I'm also uh, one of the shareholders in a horseback riding place near my house okay. in Hong Kong. So I'm slowly, slowly starting to get back into it. Um, honestly, it's a different vibe when you're not working towards a competition level. Right. You know, when you're doing it kind of more relaxed and more, more kind of chilled out, mm -hmm. it's, it's weird. It's like you don't feel that push to do it every day anymore. So it's, yeah. it's become more of a very a relaxation mechanism for me. But I miss it. I miss it. I miss driving three and a half hours in the morning to go to my horse barn to train for two hours. And it's always dead early in the morning. Always, as well, right? Always. And all our horse shows. I used to have to leave my house at four in the morning. That's still that's still nighttime for me. It was still nighttime for me. <laughs> Are you kidding? It was still dark outside. But you know, I was young and I had the stamina for it. Right. Now the idea of waking up at four o'clock in the morning to do anything <laughs> gives me gas. Like the thought of it, I'm like, oh. So it it you know, as you get older, the idea of it gets it's different. Okay. I still miss it every day, though. I miss it every day. And, and the other thing, the other thing I, I know you're really into is of course traveling. And yeah. You're one of those lucky people. That's pretty much been everywhere worth going to right I mean you've got South Africa other than Antarctica yeah, and South America I've been everywhere yeah so mm. tell me about this traveling bug obviously you're in the, the perfect job for this yeah. uh, passion of yours yeah what, what is it that you like so much about traveling I like experiencing new smells new flavors new people mm. I like to see the way other people live in real life right. you know not only what you see in the five-star hotels or whatnot that's kind of like this really glossed over kind of amusement park type of representation of their civilization, right? Mm -hmm. I really enjoy the process of, I, I'm terrified of flying. I hate the flying process. Mm -hmm. If I could walk, I would walk or swim everywhere. <laughs> but I love the process of getting off the plane and coming to a new place and getting hit. You know, you get off the plane and there's a new smell and that, that sensation and then all of a sudden like a new language and new people. And what drives me nuts is after a while when you live in one place is seeing the same corner store with the same people in it, yeah. running into the same people on the street, at the same shop, in the same party, I start getting really crazy. The reason why I started modeling was to travel. Mm -hmm. 
in modeling, we are very lucky in the sense I, that you get paid to travel. And in the beginning, even though I wasn't working, somebody else was paying for my tickets. Yeah. And I would work as much as to pay off my ticket, and then I would move on to the next place. It, I have itchy feet syndrome, so to speak. And then when I, I kind of took a break from modeling a few years ago, and instead of just sitting at home doing nothing, I started traveling around India and Thailand by myself and just slapped on a backpack and went. Wow. Yeah. That, oh, India is amazing. So you, you don't have to go, like, five star all the time? No. You wouldn't think about just putting on a backpack, going to the hostel and that? No problem that, whatsoever. That Although, I have to say, as I get older, you know, you just don't have the energy so much for it. When I was in my early 20s, I could have, you know, I could have hiked for 36 hours straight and, and be totally fine with a 500-pound backpack on my back right. and all this stuff. But, you know, obviously, everybody loves five-star hotels, and I love the service, and I love the beautiful be beds. I'd be a liar if I said I didn't. But... To be honest, you don't get to know where you are that way. When you stay in a hostel, nine times out of ten, you're eating local food, you're drinking local drinks, mm -hmm. and you're speaking to local people. Yeah. And the people that are hanging out in those places are not the high budget, I'm shopping at you know the five-star mall and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's a totally different experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I mean, now that you're on TV, can we see you maybe hosting a... A travel show in the future, would that be something? I like would love that. Yeah. You want to be my producer? I would love to be Okay, a so now we have to find funding. Do you want to be my funding? I can, I can sort <laughs> that out as well, I think. Oh, that would be phenomenal. Yeah. That has always been when people have asked me, what is your dream job? My dream job would be to host a travel show. Right. Yeah. Mm. That is to me to be able to get paid to experience new cultures would be an extremely amazing experience. It's just too bad we'd have to fly everywhere. <laughs> Seriously, like it's getting worse as I get older. Even in business class, it's still flying, right? It's still flying, and I mean, business class is a lot easier because a lot of my fear of flying has to do with feeling like when you're in. First of all, I'm six feet tall, so as you guys probably yeah, know, you need leg room. I need leg room, otherwise I'm jammed against the seat. So for 16 hours, I'm like this, which is a horror. But it's not only that; it's the claustrophobia aspect of feeling like you have 400 people sitting on your lap. Mm -hmm. Business class, you at least got a little bit of space. But whatever, let me tell you, if that plane goes down, business class people are the first to perish. <laughs> tell you that much. Fantastic. So, well, well Lisa, we almost uh, come to the end of this, but just before we go, uh, what's next for you, mate? Future plans and all that. My future plans, um, I a few months ago announced my semi-retirement from modeling. Right. I'm going to slow that down a bit, um, meaning I'm still going to do kind of, you know, I'm going to pick and choose what I want to do. I'm going to do important stuff, stuff that pays really well, money talks. <laughs> Uh, you know, obviously, I would be silly not to, but I'm not. I'm not going to do the every daily, gr every day daily grind of modeling in Hong Kong. And I think my next year or two is really going to focus on TV hosting and event hosting. Mm -hmm. This is what I'd like to do now. Um, you know, TV hosting has longevity. Yeah, I can do it until I'm 75. Right. I could, you know, I could be hosting events at an old people's home. You know, concerning the dominoes tournament or whatever. <laughs> So there's a longevity to it, and this is where I'm focusing now. I'm going to start to leave my modeling world behind a little bit. Okay, well